And today, joining us in the studio, he's a man we saw in 2012 represent the PNC in the presidential elections. He made it clear that he had a clear vision to lead this country into economic prosperity. While today, he is not representing that party. He is actually the founder and leader of the latest party certified by the, by the Electoral Commission today, Mr. Hassan Ayariga. There are some who would say that this decision to create a new party was because you did not win the not for the PNC. And so because you want to be president at all costs, you decided to create your own party. That's why I said that Electoral Commission has a lot of things to do. And that's part of why I told you that in the last uh, elections, there are a lot of t things that happened. People won elections, and it was turned over for others. Are you saying you won the election? I won the election to, in the in the PNC flag bearership. I won the elections. You said you won the 2012 election? No, PNC flag bearership. I won the. Elections. You mean the last Congress? The last Congress, I won the elections, but things were turned for because I won the first box. We had four boxes. One box I won the first box, which was made of Ashanti Volta. I won. The second box was made up of. Uh, BA, uh, Greater Accra, and uh, Eastern, I want. The third box was made up of uh, uh, Western Region and uh, Volt, uh, what do you call it? Upper West, I want. Now the last box was made of Upper East, Northern Region, and BA. And someone wins that particular box, and you want all the bigger regions, and the person becomes a parliamentary air flag, a flag bearer. How possible is that? So if you had won that election, you now let me tell you what you, happened there. You would not have created APC, would you? I would have, I would have changed it like do it the way I'm doing APC. I would have run it the way I'm running APC now, because I would have had the money, the power now to become the leader and flag bearer of the party, and I would do the things I want to do. Mm. But the constitution then. So when we went to the final next meeting, we made the changes and made the flag bearer now the leader of the party. I was able to make sure that that change happened. It did happen. But when we went to the voting, we, we've, after the first, second, third box was counted, the EC said we should hold on because it looked like as if I've won the election. So with the last box, we should wait so that they will count the boxes of general secretary, woman organizer, chairman, and others so that when they finish, they will count the last one. Because if they count this last one and I, 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 I take the lead, then there will be jubilation and people will not wait for them to announce the other boxes. Then suddenly that box was counted without our knowledge. And we're just called to come and witness that they finished counting and that's the result. So I said, okay, fine. If that is the result, bring the other four boxes and let's make a recount. Because I don't believe that after winning first, second, third box, I'll lose the last box and someone will become flag bearer. Okay. And then they just pack those boxes, put it in the easy car and sped off. That was what happened. Today I'm talking just because I'm, I feel like talking. But that was exactly what happened. Because you're talking about the EC. And these are the things that they need to change. And these are the things that they need to look at. Very important. Because this could have caused chaos. My people wanted to fight. And I said, don't fight. If it's the flag bearership of the PNC that you want to kill yourself, I would better resign. So the boys came. They wanted to cause commotion. I said, hey, I'm your leader. I'm the one looking for the flag bearership, not you. So pack your cars, pack your equipment, let's go. Let's move, let's leave them. Let them have it. We can create a bigger platform than the APs, uh, than the PNC. And we did create a platform bigger than the PNC. OK, so today you've given birth to a new party, the APC. First of all, tell me what All People's Congress means. Where did you get that name from? That's the name I believed in. That's, you see, when you're trying to lead the people, if you want to change people, you must involve people in the process of change to be able to change them. When you don't involve them in the process of change, it will be very difficult to change them. So changing people means involving them in that process. And that is why I brought in all. All in the sense that every one of us is important in this party. Mm. Peoples. People to represent the society, the, the community in which we all live. Whether you are a Ghanaian living in Ghana or you're a foreigner living in Ghana and you've become a Ghanaian, you become all the people. The Congress in the sense that instead of a party, everybody should come on board. All the political parties should come in as a Congress. So it became all people's Congress. And that's why we have the color green, white, and yellow. Green representing our vegetation, greener pasture, what we have around, what we need to do with our farmlands, what we need to do with our vegetation, what we need to do with our trees our, and everything. The quiet representing the peace and unity that we think about. Ghanaians must come together. 
we love each other. And for us to be able to move forward, we must have peace. We must represent unity, togetherness, and which I, is important. And I, and I do remember you said you were the man of peace. Yes. So it's important to have that white color then. Then you look at the last one, which is the uh, yellow. The yellow represents the national vegetation, the, the mineral resources we do have. We are so poor in this country we don't, because we don't make good use of those natural resources and mineral resources we do have. We have we've practically given it to the foreigners, and we have become beggars of the 21st century, going after them and begging, working for them, and then taking out the proceeds. So it is important to know this. Now, the broom in there represents unity, the couple power to the people. When you want to lead people, you must unite them. You must be one. You must stand together. Ghana has failed not because NDC is leading us, but Ghana has failed because the good people of Ghana are quiet. So a huge chunk of our human resource is being wasted when another political party is in power. So we are talking about unity, and the boom symbolizes that unity that we are talking about. Let's come together. This is what we need. Together we stand divided, we fall. So APC, in every aspect of APC is very important. If you look at the motto, which talk about all inclusiveness, mm. Look around, and you see that all the other political parties, what they are preaching is winner takes it all. The winner takes it all syndrome has really affected our lives. But again, Mr. Arga, for the symbols you show, the name of your party, you also know that in Nigeria, there's a party called the APC that has similar colors. I don't know. I brought in my colors for these reasons I told you. And if you look at those colors, it works with every part of everything that you see about the But again, the for the creation of any political party, you look at it in the bigger context of how uniquely different yours is from any other party in the world. You're saying that you, you did not draw any inspiration from the APC in Nigeria? Not at all. Not at all. So shocked about that, but people won't believe, but that is it. The APC in Ghana, I'm told, uh, the APC in Nigeria, I'm told, had four colors. But we have three colors. And I'm told they have a broom, standing broom. We have lion broom. Okay. And the meanings of their colors different from that of ours. And the purpose of their party, the formation of their party, is totally different from the formation of APC in Ghana. Maybe the abbreviations are the same, but the name is not the same. I'm told there is an all progressive uh, Congress, mm -hmm. and ours is all people's Congress. So the difference is in people. It, it, that, all is that's the a same. Lot of, that's a lot of difference. People and progressive are not the same. Okay, There's a lot of difference. Okay, so for this party, the APC, the new party on the block, what do you seek to do any different that we have not seen other political parties provide? A lot, a whole lot. First of all, the APC platform is created to make sure that Ghanaians, everybody in this country, is given the equal platform, equal chance, and opportunity to serve our nation. We are where we are because we don't believe in all inclusiveness. We are where we are because a huge chunk of our human resources is wasted. We are where we are because we have sidelined a lot of good, talented Ghanaians in our system. Look at this. Anytime the NDC is in power, the rest of the Ghanaians, who could be less than, more than five to 12 million people, have no jobs. They're wasted because NDC is in power. It happens when MPP comes to power too. They sideline all members of the NDC because they think that anybody in opposition is coming to destroy them. They don't even believe in any opposition. So what leader. are you going to do different? That's what I'm coming. I'm uh, taking you through the scenario so that you understand what I'm talking mm. about. Because many people are listening to us. So they need to know the dynamics of it and mm. the chemistry involved. So you realize that when another political party is in power, the rest of the political leaders wasted. The APC believes that what we need is a platform that will give everybody equal opportunity and the chance to save motherland. So we are saying, come on board. The broom means unity. Come on board. Give every Ghanaian the same opportunity, equal right, and you will see wonders in our country. Because if we are giving everybody based on competence, based on your qualification, based on what you can do, then nobody will come with any party color to get a job. And nobody will employ doctors to be ministers of agri. So, you see, there is something wrong with our mentality. There is something wrong with our leadership. We don't believe in ourselves. We don't believe in the youth of this country. All these young men and women go out there, and you see these good guys, mm. so much talented youth that we have. And what, at the end of the day, they become those products of 419 and others. 
You think it is easy to become a 419 guy? No. You must be so intelligent to be able to deceive, or let's put it that way, to convince a white man, lure him into buy into your idea. Mm. So why do we allow all these guys to go waste? Okay, and, and it fits into a discussion that we've had this week about employment and jobs that have been created in this country today. What's your big plan to deal with unemployment in the country? That is what most people always don't understand. Dealing with unemployment does not mean creating jobs. No. Creating the institutions and putting the institution at the right place to work. Automatically it creates jobs. How? Very well. This is a building that somebody probably has wanted, thinking that we need to have a media house called multi TV. Multi TV. That's his vision. And by so doing, he decided to put this building. When I got in, I didn't even get space to come up here because the whole place was crowded. All these people have been given jobs because of one person's vision. So he did not create jobs. He brought a vision, a creativity that creates jobs. And this is what our leaders don't understand. They keep on saying, I'm going to create a job. I'm going to... You don't need to create a job. Put the proper institution in the right place. And it, when it begins to work and develop it on its own, people will definitely will adapt to it. And that's the great job creation. So Ghana needs to work. And for us to work, we need to put everybody on board. Imagine that decision making mm. in this country, that the president, before he makes decision, he has the leaders of other political parties, leaders of civil societies, leaders of political uh, uh, leaders, leaders of uh, unions and other things, sitting on board to look at the energy crisis. Just imagine that. What will happen? We'll find solution to the problems that we have. But you just go to, I don't know whether you've ever seen uh, the presidency in a cabinet meeting, less than 30 people, in the same group of people, thinking along the same direction every day. And they decide for 27 million Ghanaians on a daily basis. And they get exhausted. They don't even think anymore. Mm. They just sit down, drink up, and walk away. But because we don't include everybody, we think that we're doing it. No political party can salvage Ghana until we begin to understand that all of us must come aboard and given the equal opportunity and the equal right to save motherland, we will fail. Okay. Now, for all the things you say you will do, there are some who have looked at you and said, well, Ayarika coming back into the presidential election only gives us good sense of humor. Is that what we are going to get this year? Good sense of humor is part of us. That makes you feel comfortable and secured. That makes you feel hope to believe that, yes, the one who wants to lead you will listen to you when you have problems, will be there for you when you walk to his house. Will make you laugh. Will make you, not laugh, and make you feel comfortable and secured. Laughing is part of it. It's healthy to laugh. But it doesn't mean that when the person has a sense of humor, does not have vision. When people bow down to you, doesn't mean they don't know better than you. When people become so sober with you, doesn't mean you're better than them. Mm. Don't think that way. They might be better than you, but that's their way. That's the way they think they should associate themselves with you. People must begin to understand that the presidency is not a do or die thing. And if you become president, it doesn't mean you're God. You have to open up to people. Mm. These are the people you want to lead. And you see, and, you what, have to open up and to one of the reasons I ask this question is this. In doing the research for today's interview, there was a quote I saw of you saying, well, you stop joking. Nobody jokes at age 40. What does that mean? I was, I was telling people that at age 40, you must be serious. And when I was being humorous, some people thought I was joking. But no, that's my nature. That's how I am. And nobody does at age 40. Life begins at 40. So if they want the seriousness in me, they will see it. But that's not me. What I want is to achieve. And all over my life, I've achieved. It was not just by chance for a young man at 40 to become the youngest presidential candidate of our history. Not by chance. It's by achievement and mm. commitment and working hard to become that. And I did that and demonstrated to our young men that we can be better if we decide to begin to commit ourselves in doing things. And that is what the youth of this country need. They need to feel that they are part of decision making in our nation. They are part of building our country. The old men and the old age don't believe in the young men anymore. And that is why they do not want to give Ghana or let me say hand Ghana over to the youth. But that is the important thing now. But do you know people's perception about you, Mr. Ayaga? I don't know. You need to tell me. You don't know? Not at all. You just have to Since tell me. Since 2012 that you went on campaigns, spoke to you people. Can, you can determine 24 million Ghanaians 
perception about one person. You don't know what the general you perception see, about you, Mr. Yaragar, is? The general perception about me is that I'm a nice guy. That nice I guy. I'm very humorous. That's mm. I know. What okay. else you have to tell me? Well, um, so for, for this description you give, um, what's that big plan or that big vision you have for Ghana today? What, what story would you tell us today that is different from what you sold to us in 2012? Come on board. Everybody should be part of decision making. Ghanaians should have a platform that gives everybody the equal opportunity. Let's not be too partisan anymore. Let's be in, add everybody and bring everybody on board. So what we're going to start doing is a campaign called Come On Board. Let us all believe that when we come together, Ghana will be a better place for us. Your, 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 your ideas is important. His vision is important. His methods and strategies, we must include them. Assuming we have a, 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 an institution that has been created in this country, that people with ideas, some people, groups of people will sit and listen to Ghanaians coming on with ideas on board, mm. and that we have to use it to build our nation. Don't you think we go far? Mm. Do you know what is killing our country? We do sabotage each other on a daily basis. The NDC is in power today. Right. They may be trying hard to build this country, but I tell you, the huge chunk of us is out there trying to destroy them in order to come to power. And that is what is killing us. And who suffers? Not you, the ordinary one who voted them. Because he is the one who is going to feel the pains. You are up there. When you come, look at the biggest opposition and ask him a question. They will tell you that, look, our packets are there. We have to come back to power. Not they are coming back to power to build our nation. But because their packet is dry. What kind of country is this? Why do we think that way? You sound angry. Yes, because we must begin to use our minds and brains to build our country. Not because your, early, your package is dry. Is what that about what, other people's package? Is that what people tell you? That's and what they say. All the time I listen to it and I smile. I don't like it. I hate it. Because we're deceiving the voters who go to queue and vote for us. Just imagine. When it's voting day, if you can take a queue and go out, watch and see the people who vote. You don't see all these lawyers, engineers, and doctors voting anymore. The ordinary ones who are suffering today, these are the people who go in queue and vote for these so-called politicians. But you are a politician. And that is why we must change things. That's why I said that Ghana is suffering not because NDC is in power, but Ghana is suffering because a huge, the, the good people of Ghana they're watching. Mm. Somewhere sitting down, thinking that let the noisemakers do their noise. Okay. Now, you're leader and founder of the APC. You want to be the president of this country. Uh, let's see what your solutions will be for the problems we have today. And then, for those who are watching, they'll be the better judges for whether or not they will vote for you in this year's election. Let's talk first about the economy. How do you intend to make this economy not just stable, but a thriving one? Good. Uh, all along, when I say that everybody must come on board, you will not understand the basics and the dynamics and chemistry of putting everybody on board. You see, when you bring everybody on board, you become the leader of the part, the country. Now, you open up everything, and people will now begin to make decisions and solutions to build your nation. So you put down, let's say, education, and you bring the best out of our human resource to sit with you and analyze how we are going to handle the educational sector. In that meeting, you will see people thinking better than you, the president, and will bring on board issues that you don't even understand. And until we begin to understand that we are all important mm. in managing our country, no individual can manage this world. No individual can solve our nation. But one individual can bring the out, outline the ideas and the vision, and every other person will add up. His values. So, 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 so for me, me mm -hmm. so for me, looking at the economy, mm -hmm. we will take it sector by sector. For instance, if we look at the agriculture sector of our economy, look, believe it or not, I pray God, I wish not, that if there is a disaster in this world, and we close all the borders, and every don't forget, if it's a serious, if it's a world war, nobody is going to import anything to any country or export anything to any country. Tell me. Who is thinking which of the leaders has put in place enough uh, uh, food security to cater for Ghana? Just a simple question. Have you? 
I'm, that's what I'm asking you. You see, that's the way I'm thinking. But that's not the way they are thinking. Because if we close down our bodies, no food will come in. But we it, practically import everything. Mm. Oil we do import. We have shea butter. We don't make good use of that to even make oil. And that's even the better source of oil. Mm. We import oil. Rice. Go to the northern part of it. We have good lands and farms. We don't farm. But we import the white rice, sometimes meat, Chinese white rice and everything. We do import. Chicken. We can grow everywhere. We have enough vast land in this country. We don't do that. We still import. So tell me, if those borders are closed, we will begin to eat each other. Sorry for using this word. Mm. But after one month, we will begin to kill one another and feed on human beings. Because so, we don't have the vision. Mm. So, I, I will so, tell you this. So Mr. Ayaga's vision in dealing with safe food security will be what? That's what I just told you. Which will be what? that we must make good use of what we have by going into farming ourselves. By going into farming, you know what it's going to do for us? It's going to create jobs for everybody. So you see like what I'm talking about. Putting the right institutions automatically create jobs. Mm. By going into farming, by making, making good use of our natural resources, share butter and others, making oil out of it instead of importing other things. And planting more share butter trees and other things to grow wherever the soil is good for such things. Farming, yam, and other things. We don't even make good use of all this. Look, I told this uh, company called, um, what's the name of the Despite company that do this fufu powder? Mm -hmm. It's there. It's I there. Mean, they have, yeah, group of that companies. Group yeah. That does fufu powder yeah. and other things. Yeah. We, don't, we can do that. If we think the yams will get spoiled, why don't we package them and put them into such things for the rest of the year? Why don't we do that? Look, go when it's, when, it's, when it's season period. Travel around BA. The mango that we do have mm. gets rotten. Ten cities, you buy a whole basket of mango, and you get home, half of it is even rotten. We can't even think of making juice out of it. I come, people thinking of creating jobs by putting factories down there to, to, to juice those mangoes into... So you're thinking we should stop looking at raw materials, but rather make good use of it. I get that point. But many are thinking for this year's election, and many will recall what happened in 2012. Are we still going to hear of Ayarikov in 2016? I'm, I'm sure that people who do not understand the concept of illness will be the one to call me Ayarikov. But you call yourself Ayarikov? I have never called myself Ayarikov. Point of correction. Mm. If before the elections and the debate, I made it clear to Ghanaians I was not well. I went to campaign around the Bali area. Right now is good. The roads are better. The president, I give him credit on mm. those part of He's been able to construct all those roads. It was too dusty. And I was in the open roof car, and I was campaigning. And a lot of cars were in front of me driving along. Mm. And I healed a lot of dust. It healed a lot of so it's blocked my respirational distance. So I started having cold mm. and coughing. Then the day for the elections, the debate, I told Ghanaians that I was sick mm. and that I was coughing, that I can't come for the program. Others said that no. Even I quite remember Abu Ramadan was on a platform who said that if Ayarga does not even come for the debate, they will use a bulldozer and bring him to the ground. Mm -hmm. And then I got there, of course. If you have ill health, people should not tag you to it. My wife on that day had a flask of drink and that was made up of ginger and uh, garlic so that it could sip once in a while. Did you think that she prepared that thing at the grounds there and brought it in a cafe? No. That is a ill health. So somebody who has that ill health and mm. then he coughs, Sort of people appreciating that yes, the guy was the man was still ill, but made it to the debate. Somebody taxed him with Ayarika. I'm happy, I'm grateful to God that at least whatever I'm doing, people will begin to understand the people who really love our nation and want to salvage our people. I'm 43 years old, and my achievement for 43 is unprecedented. Mm. Unprecedented. So, if if you look at my life itself then you should know that these are the people that we must emulate to see what they can offer our nation and put us on the right track. I don't need Ghana to be who I am. I am just equally living like the president is living. Mm. 
the kind of cars he drives, that's the kind of cars. Well, what kind of food do you eat? The kind of food he eat, I probably might be eating a healthier food than him. Which is what? Which is fufu, light soup, and all those things. Is that your favorite? That's, yes, that's my local food. That's what I like. I don't like rice and other things. I prepare my dessert once in a while. I prepare the cheeses for the whole family. Mm. My wife is a very good cook. She cooks so well and so good. So why not? We make good use of what we farm in this land. We eat what we farm, what we grow. Okay. What's your favorite song? Wow. You know, those days when I was 18, 16, I was, hmm, I was a rapper. Really? Yes. Give me a line. I'm sure you have that talent, don't you? <laughs> Give me just a line. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh -oh. No, sorry. We have to be serious. No, but again, no, no, but people, that's, that's but, what they don't like about but no, but people need to know you. No, people don't want to. The kind of people we are, we tell the truth. Yeah. And we behave the way we are. So tell me We're the not. truth. You you were you were you were once a rapper. Yes, give me I was a line. Once a rapper. Give me a line. Uh, okay, give me the give me the music, please. No, no, no. I mean rappers, oh. rappers, oh. rappers can do this without it. I mean, I can, I can do you can line. just give me a line. This is not the time to do it, boy. How's we talking about it? everything we do? We do it today for tomorrow against the days and the days are coming. You know that I know that everybody knows that Ghana is the best place for us. Ayurga is number one. Vote for Ayurga. He's going to be a good president. Of oh, Ghana. that's a rap from Hassan Ayurga today. One time rap. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so, Ms. Aga, for the APC, yeah. what's your plan to win this election? Good. The, the plan to win this election is that it is high time we begin to understand that we're voting for ourselves. We're voting to change our own lives. We've voted the NDC into power. We've seen the performance. We've voted the MPP into power. We've seen the performance. We're still not satisfied with that. So, winner takes it all syndrome should be something we should abolish okay. and believe in all-inclusiveness. Ayaraga's motto is all-inclusiveness. Ayaraga's uh, 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 symbol is the broom, meaning unity. And Ayaraga thinks that you can also equally serve our country. So he, is, he has created a platform that make good use of that platform, not me alone. Everybody should make good use of that. So let's all come on board. And that's going to be our first campaign uh, message, come on board. So let all of us come on board and see together what we can do. I am not saying vote for me, but rather come on board and let's see what we can do together. Because right? because thing is this, I look at your performance in 2012, you got a little over 24,000 votes. That's less than 1% of the total votes. What's the guarantee that anyone who comes on board your campaign will see the APC win the election? If you look around in this country, we have more than 20, 25 TV stations. <laughs> Today I'm here. That tells you that because you're performing, you're not the first TV station. Probably mm. you've worked somewhere, but today you're doing well here in multi TV. If you leave here, you're probably going to be better off somewhere. Your point so is? So we learn on daily basis. Mm -hmm. So on daily basis, we do learn and we upgrade ourselves. So Ayarga is the new Ayarga, and now it's the APC leader and founder. And I think that we are serious. We have demonstrated to the Electoral Commission and the world that within a month, we have been able to form a political party that has 220 district offices, 10 regional offices, and a national, a national headquarters. As we said, and I speak you to, with you today, APC is the only political party qualified to contest the 2016 general election. Qualified? Qualified say? to contest the 2016 general election. And what makes you say that? Because we have satisfied the constitutional requirement of our land, including that of the EC. But you are the a political new party. party. All, yes. of, all, all of the rest have done that in the past. No, they are not qualified for the 2016 general election. Because the EC has written letters to all the political parties, giving them until 31st of May, if they are not able to submit their audit accounts, that's mm. number one, and not able to finish them with the 100 and 44 district offices, they will not contest. So you have 144 districts. I have more than that. What's the audit that accounts for you? Much as you've been transparent, then let's talk about it. Yes. How much How much do you have to do in bringing up all these offices A in just one month? That's how what much? other political parties cannot do. How much? How much did you pay for your rent here? I'm asking for yours. I am asking you are being transparent for your it. party. I have 220 offices like yours here. Mm. So you can imagine if you... Just tell me the cost. You are being transparent. How much? I don't have to tell you. Hundreds of millions of dollars? <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands of yes. dollars. What's your source of funding? Myself. From your pocket? From my pocket. Is it, is it difficult funding a party yourself, single-handedly? It's not difficult when you want to change the lives of people. You, in, when you feed, take care of your family, 
Do you say it's difficult taking care of a family? No. It is your responsibility to make sure that your family needs are met. Mm. For me, I had the opportunity to become who I am today from a different world, from a different country, from a different continent. And I think giving Ghanaians the same opportunity and equal chance, mm. people will be better than me and can make it for themselves. That is what we need to do. Okay. We need to create a platform that our youth and young men of this country can realize their dreams. What do we do? We create a frustrated platform for them. And they begin to hang themselves and kill themselves on a daily basis. Okay, become... I just, I just, I just had a call. Well, my director had a call from someone who wants to know how to join your party. What do they do? We have on WhatsApp lines. We have created numbers on the face on Facebook. Mm. We have a page. We have telephone numbers of uh, our headquarters. We have a membership form there. You Where's can your download. headquarters? Hacho, West Hacho. Hacho. We have, we have membership form on, on, the, on the web. You can download, fill it, and send it back. Okay. And then we'll look into your details. And then you see how from there. they can get on board. Yes, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Agafa.